This is Twit. Um, I got tired of my old OnePlus phone and the fact that it's continuing to break in new and unusual ways. Uh, and so I finally bit the bullet and I've ordered a Pixel 9a. It's supposed to come, I think, on Tuesday, interestingly enough. Um, Rob, you're about to tell me I should have waited for something even better than a Pixel 9a. Well, I don't know about waited. I think it may take a little time before you <laughs> really see the effects of this. But uh, yeah, as far as phones go, anyone who's been listening for a while has heard me say many times on the show that we need a real usable Linux phone, not another Android skin, you know, not another Android like uh, Jonathan ordered, not something halfway <laughs> open, but a phone we could truly call our own, a phone we could tinker with and hack, modify, make ours, which is why I often report when new Linux phones are announced. Kind of, you know, in the hope that maybe this one will be the one, the one that makes a big difference, but, you know, they never really seem to make that big of a dent and it's like ah yay cool eh, maybe next time so maybe just maybe the free software foundation is giving us that long awaited glimmer of hope at its 40th anniversary celebration in boston the fffsf dropped the surprise announcement that the libre phone project it's the most ambitious attempt yet to bring software freedom to the to mobile devices. And unlike most Linux phone efforts, this one isn't starting with Android or trying to ship new hardware. What they're trying to do is they're going straight for the hard part, freeing the proprietary blobs that lock down today's phones. If you're not familiar, these binary blobs are the closed source firmware and drivers baked into nearly every modern phone system on a chip. They control everything from your modem and GPU to your camera and power management, and they're completely opaque. Without them, most Linux phone projects, they kind of hit a wall somewhere where they're not quite what you hope they would be. So Rob Savoy, the LibreFone project's lead developer and longtime GNU contributor, puts it plainly, quote, making fully free software for a modern commercial phone will not be quick. So you got some time. Uh, easy or cheap, but our project benefits and uh, from standing on the shoulders of giants who have done most of the work. So I think you're fine, Jonathan, the, with the Pixel now. <laughs> Maybe your next phone will come out of this. So anyway, in other words, this is a long game, but it's it's one that could finally give a completely free mobile stack, something no one has truly accomplished yet. Now LibreFone isn't building, you know, like I said, it's not building a new phone or even a new OS. You know, instead, the goal is to reverse engineer and document the proprietary firmware. So the developers, especially those outside of the DCMA jurisdictions, can build open replacements. You know, they're, they're starting by identifying phones with a few freedom problems, then creating detailed specs for others to use. Even projects with respect to um, like uh, lineage, lineage OS or replicants still rely on closed blobs. LibreFone could be the foundation that finally removes that dependency. So, of course, you know, this won't happen without community help. The FSF is asking for volunteers, all types, for coders, testers, documenters, advocates, you know, like us. We're being advocates now. I am, at least. <laughs> Donors, basically anyone who believes in the dream of truly open phone. You know, if that's you, check out librephone.fsf.org to get involved. Because, you know, let's be honest. Android might run on the Linux kernel, but it's still Google's sandbox. Uh, you know, I don't want a phone where something like as simple as sideloading an app, my own app maybe, you know, maybe I want to create something that's just sideloaded. I don't want that to be a privilege. I want that to be a right with my phone. I want a phone that's mine. And if, Libre phone, if the Libre phone project succeeds, we might finally see what a real Linux phone can be. So I have 
I have hesitations about this, actually. Um, I I have a fundamental disagreement with the FSF found the FSF's position on binary blob firmware. Um, because basically all chips at this point have firmware built into them. And where the FSF draws the line is if the user has to touch and load that firmware, that's where they're not fine with it being closed source. But if the firmware lives on the chip to where the user doesn't have to interact with it, then it's fine that it's closed source and they don't care. And personally, I find that to be a, um, a really weird place to draw the line and not very helpful. Uh, personally, I don't care about loading closed source firmware so long as there's you know, a, a, an appropriate license given to the binary that allows um, allows it to be included with your distro or your, you know, your phone image, what have you. Um, obviously, it's great to have open source firmware for all of these individual chips. But I, I think the fact that the FSF just looks at a chip that has that firmware built into it and just sort of closes their eyes and closes their ears and goes, la, 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 we don't see it, la, like that's, it doesn't help anybody. So I, I, I find their I find their whole position here to be just a little weird. Well, I feel like maybe I'm misunderstanding or misreading. I feel like kind of the, part of the point here is that you know because things that run say the cellular modem is closed source, and the the manufacturers make that for Android or well, I guess they aren't making it for iOS, but they're making it for Android. It's hard for a Linux distro to make it work make that hardware work with linux mm -hmm. and that would be a lot easier if if they had access to that code and had open code yeah but a lot of these pieces of hardware those firmware blobs they are distributed and they're distributed with a license on them that says you can include this in your image it's not a problem the, the problem the SFS have, has with it is that the user, or the operating system in this case, has to interact with this piece of binary code that is not open source. And so to them, having any interaction with a closed source binary, you know, corrupts the whole thing. It's no longer Libre, according to the Free Software Foundation. And I just, you know, I, 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 I kind of take the opinion that the vast majority of the Linux distros do that. No, that's just not true. You know, we can load closed source binaries to hardware chips and still be an open source OS. So are you saying you're saying their their position is further than yours? Like they expect it to be more open. They are looking and you're for fine with like they they are looking for something to be more open, but they're looking for something to be more open in an, an almost hypocritical way. Okay, so let's let's take a Stream Deck, right? This is essentially a computer. Mm. This is likely a Linux computer, right? And it's hung off of USB. There's firmware that runs on this. In this case, the firmware is, again, very likely a Linux install. Parts of this are open source because it's Linux. Parts of this are not. According to the FSF, so long as when I... When I plug this into my computer, when I plug the USB in, if it just comes up and says, hello, I am a stream deck, then this piece of hardware respects my freedom. That's the term they use. If I plug this in and this hardware says, I need you to provide the firmware for me to run, and my computer then has to transfer over the USB cable a closed source firmware image, the FSF then says, that does not respect your freedom. And the thing that I disagree with fundamentally with the FSF about this is what they consider to be the difference is whether I have to load that closed source firmware blob onto this or not. And in my opinion, that doesn't matter at all. The only thing that matters is, is there firmware running on this and can I get to the source of it? I actually yeah. consider it to be slightly better for the end user if you have the ability to load firmware on it, because then you have some chance of fixing it, there's some chance of making it open. Whereas if it's locked on there forever, it's in my opinion, even more closed. Right. I agree with you there. I think it's, I think it's fine. What you said, you know, if, if, as long as you can make it work. Um, 
I don't think that what the FSS FSF, even if they have a different opinion on on where they want to go, I don't think it hurts those that have our opinion. I think their work that they hope to do towards these blobs can help those who don't care if there are still blobs there, but it it provides more openness in areas. Sure. And and don't don't misunderstand me. I have absolutely no problem with the FSF trying to come along and reverse engineer some of these firmware images. Um, I just I just have seen over the years that the FSF does things that are not very helpful and don't make sense. And so they have like the the deep lobbed Linux distro that they do that is very difficult to run. Um, And they come out and they'll also uh, they'll advertise pieces of hardware that are like respects your freedom hardware. And it's, you know, something that's 10 years old. And the only reason it respects your your freedom is because the firmware is baked onto it. when you don't have to touch and it. And like they said here, though, they're not making an OS. They're not making a hardware. They're attacking, you know, each individual blob here one at a time. Mm-hmm. And then others who make phones can utilize the work that they've done. But obviously, they can. They don't have to fully utilize it. They could take their code. They could take the closed source code. They can combine it together. But it gives them some access to stuff, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious what the Free Software Foundation's take would be on a uh, Linux-based Fire TV. I mean, it's going to be this. It's going to be the same, right? Do you have access to all the code? If so, good. If you don't, then it's closed source and does not respect your freedom. Yeah. Right. So uh, yeah, we, it, you know, I just it it gets me sometimes when ideology turns into kind of a roadblock because it's a lot of people. I just want it to work. That's their opinion. And yeah, we want open source, but I personally, for me, my line is if it's firmware to help hardware run, I don't really have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I want my op- operating system open source, but if I have to load a firmware blob for my graphics card or my mouse or whatever, because it's, mm-hmm. it's supporting the hardware, uh, it's, it's not a near as big a deal for me. Yeah. Uh, basically the question is are you willing to die for it <laughs> they they could probably i mean like 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 you're saying they're they're f- maybe focus on a little more on things that maybe aren't necessary so i guess the downside here is that if they adjusted their focus and you know maybe left some things alone that didn't need to be because it's fine uh it could maybe speed up their progress and and get us to that free phone future yeah so here here is here is my my take on what fsf should do um rather than concentrate on these firmware blobs that are closed source what they instead should do is look at the various pieces of hardware that don't have patches upstream in the linux kernel and there are a bunch of these because arm vendors are terrible about this hard hardware vendors are terrible about this who Everybody is pretty bad about this. Almost almost every hardware vendor. What they'll do is they'll have a, you know, a, a 2.6.23 Linux kernel and then a whole bunch of patches on top of that to make their stuff work. They'll publish that somewhere as a tarball and say, yes, we have open source for this and nobody can use it. So, like, if anything that the FSF should be doing to make Linux phones work, it would be to go and try to reverse engineer Linux support for like the Snapdragons and the various pieces of hardware don't care about the firmware. Get things upstreamed in the kernel so that people can actually use the this stuff. And unfortunately, that, as far as I can tell, is not what they're doing. If you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out the Untitled Linux Show. You can find us in your favorite podcasting app or subscribe to our YouTube channel down in the links below. See you there.